see this turnout tonight, on Sunday night. If you have your Bibles, let's open them to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 9. We uh, almost through our study here at the plagues. We're going to look tonight at the seventh plague. In Exodus chapter 9 and verse 13. In Exodus 9.13 we find these words, Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For this time I will send all of my plagues on you yourself and on your servants and on your people so that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. For by now, I could have put out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, and you would have been cut off from the earth. But for this purpose, I have raised you up, to show you my power, so that my name may be proclaimed in all of the earth. You are still exalting yourself against my people, and will not let them go. Behold, about this time tomorrow, I will cause a very heavy hell to fall, such as never been in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. Now therefore sin, get your livestock, and all that you have in the field into safe shelter. For every man and beast that is in the field and is not brought home will die when the hell falls on them. And whoever feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh hurried his slaves and his livestock into the houses. But whoever did not pay attention to the word of the Lord left his slaves and his livestock in the field. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, so that there may be hell in all the land of Egypt, on man and beast and every plant of the field in the land of Egypt. Then Moses stretched out his staff toward heaven, the Lord sent thunder and hell and fire rained down to the earth. And the Lord rained hell upon the land of Egypt. There was hell and fire flashing continually in the midst of the hell. Very heavy hell, such as never has been in the land of Egypt since it became a nation. The hell struck down everything that was in the field to all the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And the hell struck down every plant of the field and broke every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the people of Israel were, there was no hell. Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you again tonight. We just praise you for this time and this day that you've given to us. It is my prayer tonight that you would speak to every heart that is gathered here as we look at this passage of Scripture, that we may see that peace that you're able to give us, Father, that we may understand and see your grace and mercy and, and your power. And we'll give you the praise. I pray as I preach this message to be hidden behind the cross. I pray, Father, for your continued blessing on this church, that you would add to this church and allow this place to be a lighthouse in this community, that this may be a place of hope in hopeless times, a place of salvation from a sin-sick world. And Lord, we'll give you proper place, the head of the church, and will exalt your holy name, knowing that if you be lifted up, that you will draw all men unto yourself. We love you, thank you, and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, at this plague, like all of the other plagues that we have looked at so far, we see that Moses comes to Pharaoh again, and he has that same message, let my people go. But then he gives a warning to Pharaoh. A personal warning. I don't know if you saw this there in verse 14 and paid attention to this. But he says, for this time I will send all of my plagues on you yourself. The King James uh, says that I will send all my plagues on, on your heart. Which is an accurate, uh, probably a more accurate uh, translation of the actual Hebrew. These plagues uh, that are coming to Pharaoh... Moses is warning him that all these external plagues
plagues that uh, have affected the land of Egypt are now going to be coming not just externally, but internally upon Pharaoh. Remember, Pharaoh continued to harden his heart. Every time God would send a plague, Pharaoh would harden his heart and harden his heart and harden his heart. And now God says, these plagues are coming on your heart. Not only is God saying to Pharaoh, am I in control of all the weather and the external things that happen in the land of Egypt, not only am I in control of the Nile, the frogs and the flies, but I want you to know, Pharaoh, that I'm also in control of your heart, your mind, your soul. This means to Pharaoh that for now on, Pharaoh is not going to find any peace in his soul. No peace in his inner being. Uh, he will be distressed by all these plagues. These plagues are coming now upon his heart. You know, God is in control of our peace. Matter of fact, the Bible says about Jesus Christ in Acts 10.36, it says, The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, for he is the Lord of all. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 5.1, Therefore we are justified by faith, and we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So Moses lets Pharaoh know, you will have no peace because of these plagues. And then, not only that, he lets Pharaoh know of his power. There in verse 15, he says uh, to Pharaoh, he says, I want you to know I could have put my hand out and struck you and your people with pestilence, and you would have been cut off from the earth. God is letting Pharaoh know that I have actually been holding back my power. If I desired, I could have wiped you off the face of the earth. Not only you, but I could have wiped all of Egypt off the face of the earth, but I have been doing this for a purpose. I've been bringing about a purpose. And that purpose is the very reason I allowed you to have this position. I raised you up for this purpose. He said, I did it so that, not so that Pharaoh may be known throughout all the land, but I did it so that I will be known among all the nations of the earth. God is allowing this to happen so that all the world will know that all of these gods that Egypt serves, all of these false gods, are not gods at all. That there is only one God, and that is Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Look, if you will, over to Exodus chapter 18. Exodus chapter 18, and verse number 11. Actually, let's put this back up and read verse 10 also. Look at what it says here. Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh and has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. And look at verse 11. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods. Stop there for just a second. And look at what he just proclaimed. Now all the gods of Egypt were well known throughout all the land. And as God is bringing these plagues on Pharaoh and upon the land of Egypt, he is doing it because he wants his name to be known throughout all of the known world. And now it, it will be accomplished. It will happen. Jethro has come to that conclusion that God's name is above all of those other gods that are in the world. We know that to be true. Those of us who are Christians, we know that God is exalted above all of the gods of the world. But God goes on with Pharaoh in this discussion. He lets Pharaoh know, uh, I raised you up for this purpose. Pharaoh, I want you to know that you are in power, not because you're popular, not because you're handsome, not because, you know, you were destined to be king, but I am the one who gave you that position. The Bible says in Isaiah 9, 6, prophesying about the coming of Jesus. It says, For unto us a child is born, and a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. It is God who raises men up to power. It is God who places the government in position, and he is 